Established in 1949 as a collective security agreement led by the United States, NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, is experiencing a revival following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February. Historically maintaining a position of neutrality, even if being functionally aligned with the West, both Finland and Sweden have submitted requests to join NATO. And even historically neutral Switzerland has moved closer to NATO, exploring the possibility of engaging in joint military operations with NATO countries and backfilling munitions sent from NATO members to Ukraine. All of these raise some really interesting questions around the security dilemma and the ideas of balancing, bandwagoning, and buck-passing in foreign policy. So why is all of this happening, and why is it important for the field of global politics? Hey everyone, I'm Noah Zerbe. I'm a professor of global politics at California State Polytechnic University Humboldt. Welcome to IR Explainer, where I explore the theories and concepts behind current events in global politics. As a collective security organization, NATO members agree to mutually defend one another in the event of an attack by a third party against one of them. Specifically, NATO was created during the Cold War to counter a potential Soviet attack against Western Europe. When it was founded, NATO had a total of 12 member states, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Iceland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, Norway, Portugal, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Over time, the alliance gradually expanded, adding Greece and Turkey in 1952, Germany in 1955, and Spain in 1982. After the end of the Cold War, NATO expanded into Eastern Europe, much to the chagrin of Russia, which viewed NATO expansion into the former Soviet bloc countries of Eastern Europe as a threat to its national security. Nevertheless, NATO added a host of new member states through the 1990s and early 2000s, including the Czech Republic, Hungary, and Poland in 1999, Bulgaria, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Slovakia, and Slovenia in 2004, Albania and Croatia in 2009, Montenegro in 2017, and most recently North Macedonia in 2020. The proposed additions of Finland and Sweden would represent a dramatic expansion of NATO membership, primarily because those two countries have for so long maintained their autonomy and neutrality. But according to the Finnish Prime Minister, NATO membership was necessitated by Russian aggression in Ukraine, an ironic twist given Russia's invasion was driven, at least in part, by concerns over Ukraine's warming relations with the West. But what does international relations theory tell us about these dynamics? Actually, quite a bit. The literature on collective security maintains that countries will respond in one of several ways when faced with an external threat. Specifically, states generally respond in one of three ways when faced with a more powerful opponent. First, they might attempt to balance either internally by increasing their own military or economic power or externally by allying with countries in order to become powerful enough to resist or challenge that outside power. This tends to occur most often in multipolar systems like Europe prior to World War I or the Warring States period in Chinese history, where there are multiple states with relatively equal power. Second, Countries might engage in a practice called bandwagoning, in which rather than trying to increase power either through internal or external balancing, countries join with the most powerful states. In bandwagoning, weaker states generally decide that the cost of countering the larger power is too great and instead join with them. Bandwagoning tends to be more common in bipolar and unipolar systems, which afford relatively few opportunities for balancing. Finally, countries might also engage in buck passing, essentially refusing to take action to address the threat posed by the most powerful states and instead letting other countries bear the cost of addressing that threat. Interestingly, while balancing and bandwagoning receive the most attention in the IR literature, buck passing is probably the most common response. Historical examples might include the refusal of the United States, the United Kingdom, France, and the Soviet Union to effectively counter growing Nazi aggression across Europe in the 1930s. And so how does all of this help us understand contemporary debates over NATO expansion? It offers a couple of insights, I think. First, we might understand Finland and Sweden's move to join NATO as an effort to engage in bandwagoning in the face of Russian aggression. 
Interestingly, though, NATO's expansion might also complicate U.S. efforts to balance against China's increasing influence and reach in the Pacific region, drawing U.S. attention more squarely back towards Europe. There's a lot of moving pieces here, and it'll be interesting to watch how all of this develops over time. But that's it for now. If you'd like to learn out more, check out my other videos on collective security and the security dilemma, which I'll link to in the description below. If you found this video helpful, click the thumbs up button and subscribe to catch future explainers as I release them. Please leave any questions you have or any suggestions for future explainer topics in the comments section below. And thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.